Earth without life. Climate change, natural calamities, wars, and overpopulation can occasionally cause us to reflect. Is the human model no longer in use? How did we get this far to begin with? What if we didn't even exist? What would happen if we didn't exist? Join us on a journey where we talk about if life ceased to exist on our planet and theories by different scientists on the topic. From Thanos wiping out half of mankind in Avengers Infinity War for our own benefit, to humans abandoning a destroyed world in WALL-E, it's thankfully a popular topic. Let's first talk about the root of it all. Where did we come from? We humans are simply the end result of a long evolutionary process. There were early humans who paved the way for Homo sapiens, the knowing human being who is probably <laughs> not so knowing. Our ancestors originated in Africa. The link between humans and apes was most likely Australopithecus, which resembled apes more than contemporary humans. Our more human-like ancestors originated in Ethiopia along the Afar Rift. They were initially recognized by the fossil Lucy, a lady who most likely walked upright. Lucy's ancestors colonized the entire planet from Africa. Homo erectus, or upright man, dominated Asia, where he most likely met other early human species that died out. Let's further delve in and discuss the various stages in the evolution of Homo sapiens. The process of becoming a human begins with Homo erectus. Homo neanderthalensis, or Neanderthal man, was particularly stunning, named after discoveries in the Neander Valley near Dusseldorf, Germany. Because of his stocky frame, Neanderthal man was perfectly fitted to the frigid temperature of the interglacial period, during which he invaded Europe. Cro-Magnon man, the precursor of today's Homo sapiens, displaced him since he was already very similar to us. However, Neanderthal man is far from extinct. Because human races have surely interbred, most of us carry his genetic material. Let's gain a better understanding of the environment and Homo sapiens. For the first time, a type of human entered the planet and produced civilization on a broad scale with Homo sapiens. We enter the world of these early humans through cave paintings, miniature ivory sculptures, and incised drawings. They, like the Neanderthals, first lived in caves. However, they quickly began to build houses, settle down, and cultivate. This indicates the start of intervention in a natural environment with which they have previously coexisted. Fields were created by clearing forests. Previously, wild animals were domesticated and genetically transformed through selective breeding. Mineral resource extraction began, initially on a limited scale, then more and more intensely as humans spread. Industrial exploitation of nature and wildlife by a corporation. So what would the world be like if man did not exist? Science has already devised a method for imagining a world without humans it would most likely be highly forested in the Northern Hemisphere. Germany may be crossed in the shade of trees even in Roman times. But it gets worse. The creatures we know as steppe or mountain inhabitants will live unselfconsciously and without fear in the lowlands and woodlands. Bears, wolves, and lynxes would be at home throughout Europe, and animals that are now nocturnal, such as red deer, would never have given up their habit of feeding in the sunshine if they had not been hunted. The American primitive horse, and possibly the American camel, would not have become extinct, nor would African wild animals have returned to the savannas. For better insights, let's see what scientist Nick Canning has to say. According to Nick Canning, if life did not exist on Earth, it would be a drastically different place from what we know. The composition and chemistry of the atmosphere would be totally different, which would have a significant impact on the climate and the physical processes that shape the land. If we were to visit such a place, we would undoubtedly discover it to be a hostile and alien world in which we could not exist. Although life emerged approximately 3.5 billion years ago, it remained predominantly single-celled and anaerobic for nearly 2 billion years. When photosynthetic bacteria evolved, they gradually transformed the planet's atmosphere from one that was largely carbon dioxide and nitrogen, with trace amounts of oxygen, to one that was more oxygen-rich. This oxygen aided the evolution of the more complex eukaryotic cell and ultimately the emergence of multicellular life. It also precipitated iron oxides, resulting in the world's red soils. There would be no ozone layer to filter off harmful UV radiation if there was no oxygen. Without life, 
the original high levels of carbon dioxide would have remained in the atmosphere since marine carbonates were incapable of removing it. So long, White Cliffs of Dover and the limestone formations that make up our landscapes. Life adapted to the Earth, profoundly altering it in the process. Next, let's see what scientist Hilary Shaw has to say. Without life, Earth could resemble Venus. There would be no oxygen, but plenty of carbon dioxide, which might cause a runaway greenhouse effect, causing the oceans to evaporate. Sulfur and nitrogen oxides would almost certainly be present in the atmosphere, resulting in sulfuric and nitric acid rain. Without oceans, plate tectonics may stall, leaving only enormous volcanoes piercing through a world crust of granite, erupting infrequently, but catastrophically. The great majority of terrestrial rocks, including slate, limestone, chalk, and all other sedimentary rocks, would not exist. And now we have scientist Mike Follows sharing his insights. According to him, even if Earth were devoid of life, its atmosphere and oceans would give it a pale blue appearance. However, if Earth loses its magnetic field, it will resemble Venus or Mars, a dull brown, since the solar wind will eliminate the atmosphere and oceans. Life on Earth did not begin with photosynthesis between 3.5 and 4 billion years ago, and chlorophyll, a green pigment, did not appear for another billion years. Only around half a billion years ago did the land plants that invaded Earth and rendered the continents green emerge. The look of a planet provides little information about the presence of life, but examination of its atmosphere may. James Lovelock, best known for his Gaia hypothesis, formerly worked for NASA and irritated his bosses by claiming that a trip to locate life on Mars would be a waste of money since there would be no indication of life in the Martian atmosphere. In comparison, our atmosphere's composition is far from lifeless. Life on Earth is what preserves the proportion of oxygen to near 20%. Scientists haven't ruled out the prospect of discovering life on Mars entirely, but there are more likely options within our solar system. It could be discovered in hydrothermal vents on the ocean floors beneath Europa's frozen crust with tidal heating providing the necessary energy. Titan, one of Saturn's moons, may also harbor life. These worlds may not appear to be promising places to live, yet appearances can be deceiving. Whereas we have Chris Stringer who says that humans are inevitable. Chris Stringer, a professor and research leader in human origins at the Natural History Museum in London, believes that competition for resources had a role in the extinction of the Neanderthals. I think they would probably still be here if we hadn't been around. If we hadn't come into Europe 45,000 or 50,000 years ago, he told Live Science. Stringer claims that Neanderthals lived complicated lives in Europe similar to modern humans but they struggled to adapt to climate change and were very few in number with minimal genetic variety. This is bad news for any species since it indicates inbreeding and poor health. Stringer believes that Neanderthals were already in trouble when modern humans arrived. I think that may have been what tipped them over the edge. Now that we heard what the scientists had to say, let's delve deeper into the complexities of what would Earth be like without humans. Using Chernobyl, a city in northern Ukraine, as an example, we may forecast that the planet will undergo a slow process of regeneration. Nature has taken advantage of human absence since the Chernobyl nuclear tragedy 30 years ago. Wildlife thrives in these areas, rapidly reclaiming human settlements and landscapes, explains Professor Weston. Millions of tons of plastic pollution would begin to decompose if they were not replaced by new plastics natural streams that bring nutrients and clean out contaminants may reappear. Sea levels may fall, and the waters may repopulate with new inhabitants. New reefs could form. Wildlife would thrive. Rare and common species could easily spread their habitats and repopulate. Birds would help to spread life by dispersing seeds. Nature would restore the landscape, which would resemble the wilderness that existed prior to mankind. Looking at the recent situation, people stayed at home to prevent the spread of coronavirus. There were considerably less people driving cars, fewer factories were functioning, and air pollution levels plummeted globally, as evidenced by satellite photography. Now that various theories have been tossed around, it's all probability on what could have been. If we were to die out, then over time, Earth's ecosystem would recover from the mess we've done, and eventually, in the far future, it will be as if we were never even a thing. Sounds scary, doesn't it? But that's nature for you. Anyways, that's all we've got for today's video. If you like it and want to see more, drop a like and consider subscribing. See you in the next one.